Hello and welcome back to Assassin's Creed 2 The Casual Playthrough. We are on episode 9. Episode 9, unbelievably. And we are basically done with Florence for quite a while. We will be moving to a new location this time around. Trying to meet up with uh, Leonardo, our best friend. See what he's up to. And um, that should basically cover what we're doing today. So, with that said, let's get moving. And here we are. This is uh, this mission is one of the weird mechanics in the game. Leonardo! Ezio? What luck! I uh, have run into a bit of trouble. <laughs> Let me see if I can help. I know how to fix it, but lack the means to do so. If you could just lift the wagon. What is this thing? Eh? It looks like a giant bat. Oh, nothing. Just an idea I've been working on. I could not leave it behind. <sighs> what is it for? Well, I shouldn't really talk about it. Beh, al diavolo. I can't hold it in anymore. Ezio, I think I figured out how to make a man fly. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, I'll drive. But I haven't even told you where I'm going. Interesting. I wonder if that will factor in later. It will. It will factor in later. Get excited. It's awesome. Venezia. Such a beautiful city. So many sources of inspiration. Ponte di Vialto, Piazza San Marco, L'Arsenale. What's wrong? We're not alone. What's happening? Who are they? Rodrigo Borgia's men. Why? What do they want with us? I think they want us dead. Leonardo, hide! Let's turn down that game volume. And here we are. Fighting off Rodrigo Borgia's men. As we make our way to Venezia because Nothing is easy for Ezio in his life, but then again, he does make a lot of enemies. Yep, and that guy probably died. Oh no, hard turn, hard turn! Oof, that guy probably died too. I'm gonna be honest, our kill count, it's quite high. Man, this carriage is built like a steakhouse, but rides like a bistro. I will say, it's definitely, a, 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 I guess it's a nice change of pace, uh, because, you know, in Assassin's Creed 1, there was no break from the normal mechanics, um, so I think they took that into consideration when they were making Assassin's Creed 2, to add a little flavor every once in a while. I mean, oh god, they're lighting the bridge on fire. Uh, th this is definitely flavor. Are you kidding me? There was no need to add the dodging of fire arrows into this part of the game. Yep, there we go. Now on fire. But from my understanding of video games, if my car's on fire, I usually go faster or it blows up. One of those two. And I don't think either happens, so. Assassin's Creed 2, 0 out of 10. I wonder if other players found this, how they found this mission, because, I mean, it is, I, I don't think I've ever failed it, but my lord, is it, uh, annoying. <laughs> that, I think that's the right word for it, annoying. Because you have to just weave back and forth, dodge a thousand things, and then all of a sudden, the ground starts to burst into flames. And you're expected to just, yep, you're good. Like, if Rodrigo really wanted us dead, 
Like, use the same amount of men that you're using now as, like, one army and just attack us randomly. You know, when we we'll, Apparently, he can track where we're going, so... I mean, I've probably killed, like, 15 dudes. Go, Leonardo. They are here for me, not you. And catch up with you later. Okay, it's montage time. When we break the rules, we break. Cut. No, kill him. Okay. That took a while. Let's look around. Uh, you know, now that I'm playing this again, and obviously I've, I played it quite a long time ago, but it's interesting. I wanted to check out how much detail they put into areas that weren't weren't going to be seen by players a lot. Okay, so they're blocking off the church up there. That's kind of lame. Maybe it'll be available at a different time, though. Oh, well. Looks like you can't export too much here, so let's get out of here. Move on. New area. I believe this is the kingdom of Forley, which we have not been to yet. One of the, uh, let's say, I mean, uh, one of the more grim areas in the game. Not that it's not pretty, but uh, definitely a bit darker. But let's focus on when I when I come to a new area, I, I kind of like to clear out the uh, viewpoints a little bit just to get a better lay of the land. So let's do that and uh, catch up with Leonardo if we can find him. One thing I've noticed in this playthrough is that the world's a little uh, cloudy. It's kind of cloudy in a, uh, for a lot of the. Uh, regions that we go to I mean Montorgioni um, that's quite dark at times Forley's quite dark I wonder if that was intentional or because I remember the game being brighter but then again maybe it's just a few areas that are kind of uh, cloudy and grim anyway just a thought definitely a beautiful city despite all the clouds and gray. What do we got? Okay, we're cleaning up a little. <laughs> all right, I checked off a few more and now to Leonardo. Thank you, Ezio. You saved my life. I did what had to be done. You would have done the same. I doubt it. Bravery is not my strong suit. I owe you a debt, brother. Di niente. Tutti a bordo! Fra poco si salpa! That's our traghetto. Venezia waits. Where's your pass? What pass? You don't have a pass? You cannot enter Venezia without a pass. Who invited you? Uh, nobody. Basta! No pass, no entrance! Don't worry, Leonardo. I'll come up with something. Don't just stand there. I need help. Okay. Strangely enough, we have to help a lady who happens to be stuck on a rock. Not sure, A, how she got there. B, Why she can't get back. Um, or see what it has to do with us, but here we are. Let's help the lady out. Let's see if I can remember any of the boat mechanics. Okay, jeez, we get it. We're coming. Have a little patience there. Madonna. Oh, you are good. The ladies must like you. I 
wasn't looking to impress, only to help someone in distress. Which is exactly why you impress. And here's where we learn about her. Catalina Schwarza. She is arguably one of the most interesting uh, women during the Renaissance period of Italy. I won't go into why that is at the moment, but um, just know that she plays an important part in the Renaissance and uh, definitely a notable figure. Lucky we picked her up. Auditore, but please, call me Ezio. I'm Caterina. Now, Ezio, we must find you suitable reward. Do you have any suggestions? There is perhaps something you could help me with. I'm all ears. Yes, signora. Whatever you say, signora. He won't trouble you anymore. I took care of it. Thank you, Caterina. Perhaps we'll see each other again. Should you ever find yourself in the city of Forli, it would be my pleasure to welcome you. I look forward to enjoying your hospitality. Please accept my most humble apologies, Messere. But had I known... <laughs> it's quite alright, my friend. Well, that worked out. Ezio has no idea why. We do. Let's talk to best friend Leonardo. Maybe he can shed some light. Oh my gosh, we're back on the ship. Did they do the interior this time? No. Come on! Be careful, Ezio. Do you know who that was? My next conquest. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, Ezio. That's Caterina Sforza, daughter of the Duca di Milano. Her husband is... Husband? See, si. her husband is the Lord of Forli. That woman is as powerful and dangerous as she is young and beautiful. Sempre come una donna per me. So good. What... An interesting character Ezio is, definitely in comparison to Altair. No offense to him, but more flavor here. Everything all right? Better than all right. You're making amazing progress. Amazing's quite a strong word. Then why are we stopping? Prolonged exposure to the Animus can have, uh, side effects. <laughs> awesome. It's nothing to worry about. You haven't shown any of the symptoms. Symptoms? What symptoms? Degradation of cognition, temporal hallucinations, multiple awareness issues, overlapping realities, you know. So what you're saying is... What we're saying, Desmond, is if you're not careful, you may not need the Animus to visit with your ancestors. Which wouldn't be a bad thing, assuming you could control it. Up until now, though, no one has. Subject 16. We have safeguards, Desmond. And they kept him in the Animus for way too long, sometimes days at a time. We're being careful with you. I hope so. Anyway, I was hoping we could test out your skill retention. See if you've picked up some of Ezio's abilities. I'm game. Great. Meet me downstairs when you're ready. And we are back to reality. Cold, lame reality. With no hidden blade. No beautiful scenery. Alright, let's get this over with. Lucy, where the heck are you? There she is. Okay. Alright, let's do whatever training you want. Here we go. So what's the plan? We're gonna see what you've managed to retain. Come on. Abstergo's out there, looking for us. They're better funded and better equipped. So it's only a matter of time before they find this place. We need to be ready for them when they do. I want you to activate the warehouse's defense system. I'll let you figure out how to reach the sensors. 
Oh, come on. Not even a hint? Open your eyes, Desmond. See, I'm seeing things. Do the hallucinations last longer than 30 seconds? No. Then it's nothing to be worried about. It'll pass. I mean, that's some tough talk for someone who's not having hallucinations. <laughs> but okay, Lucy, no problem. I'll ignore it. Looks like we gotta hit all the red buttons. So, this one's first. So, how am I doing? You've picked up every single one of Ezio's skills. The adoption rate is fantastic. Another day or two and we'll be done. Upon reflection, now Desmond is super easy to control, just like Ezio. I never really uh, thought about that before. Alright, you gotta tell me. Why Ezio? Why Italy? I mean, we could have just gone back to Altair again. Followed him during his early years. It started with 16. Ah, good old subject 16. He repainted my room, you know. With his blood. I'd been going through his files. Vidic flagged a couple of his animus sessions. A bunch of different ancestors, different dates and locations. Ancient Africa, the Middle East. But towards the end, he became obsessed with Italy. I think he knew about the vault. A few of the records of his later anima sessions are missing. And the sessions that are there... After everything the Templars put him through... After everything... I put him through... It's all scrambled. If we hadn't pushed Sixteen so hard, we'd have the answers already. And maybe he'd still be alive. So you're after the Codex and the Vault? I knew you had an ancestor in Italy who was at the center of all of this. All right, I think we're done for the day. You should get some rest. Lucy, what happened to Sixteen wasn't your fault. You were just as much a prisoner as I was. Thanks. Good night, Desmond. I'm glad you're here. Ooh la la. Kristen Bell likes us. Well, this is a bit trippy. Looks like uh, we're having those side effects after all. Now this is a really cool part. You get to go back to Acre. And this is where, if you've seen the video, we've covered it. Um, this is William of Montferrer. That's where, right down to the right, that's where he kills his troops and where we kill him. Ooh, sorry my dude. <laughs> but it's really cool. I'm glad that they brought us back to Assassin's Creed 1 because... I don't know. It's nice to uh, nice to see them recreate the city at least. This city at least. Would love to see even more of that. Oh no, we have to climb this. I hate climbing this tower, and it all is because of one part. Whoever designed this, it looks incredible, and it climbs relatively easily, except for right up here not this part hold on I'm up here yep 
easy enough. And this feels just like Assassin's Creed 1. Right here. Getting to that little pole. Oh my lord, if you miss that jump, you're toast. But, um, it's nice to see Acre again. Acre, depending on how you pronounce it. I wonder why we're Altair. Yep, and then we had to move around, just like the original game. And we have arrived. Nice. It's the woman from Acre. What was her name? Maria. Yeah. I wonder what he wants with her. Whoa. I wasn't expecting that. Wait a second. Why aren't I following Altair? here? I'm stuck here with Maria? Oh shit. That must be. This is one weird dream. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but it's getting late and we will... Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Weird dreams, that's all. All right. I'll let you get ready. See you in a few. Ah, good of you to join us. Sorry. Long night. What a professional. What a professional approach. Leave him alone. Well, you'll forgive me if I want to get some actual work done. Oh, madness, isn't it? Sean! Please, that's enough. All right. I like how our bedroom is just right in the middle of the office. Very strange, but... <laughs> like, how would you change? I guess in front of everyone. Fair enough. Fortunately, we are finally returning to beautiful Renaissance Italy. This has got to be the most beloved city in all of Assassin's Creed. Venezia. We have uncovered none of it, but I'm excited to get into this part of the game. Let's talk to best friend, Leonardo. Messer Da Vinci! Yes? Buongiorno e ben arrivato. I am Elvise. Senor Donna has asked that I escort you to the workshop. Are you ready? Ah, Venezia. What other place is as beautiful, as stable, as perfect? Come, I will show you her wonders. Our first stop, the Rialto Bridge. Behold the elegance with which she spans the Grand Canal, a symbol of Venetian unity and pride. Let us continue. Here we are, San Giacomo di Rialto. Oldest church in Venezia. Isn't she beautiful? And her clock tower. Magnifico. Come, come. There's more to see. No other city can match the size of Venezia's markets. Be it spices or silk, 
from near and far. There is. There is. You were told to stay home, but the rent is paid. I have every right to sell here. Emilio disagrees. No, no, stop, stop. Let us continue the tour elsewhere. Well, that dude's having a rough day. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse. I may be in the minority here, but I really enjoy when games take you for a little tour of their uh, cities. Not sure why, it's just, especially in games based in historical locations, I love it. Look, isn't it amazing? Would you mind buying it for me? I, uh, I left my money with my bags. Hey, mind your step, Corleone. Here we have the Palazzo della Seta, home to Emilio Barbarigo. Normally I'd suggest a closer look, but with the way things are now... Why? What's happened? He is attempting to unify the merchants beneath a single banner. There's been resistance. Some of it violent. What kind of resistance? They say they're fighting for the people, for freedom or some such nonsense. But Giannate, if you ask me. They destroyed my stand. I demand compensation. Here you are, then. <clears throat> the Doge will know about this. I'll report you to the council. Good luck with that, my friend. Oh, oh, what are you doing? You're under arrest for disrupting commerce. What? You just invented that. There's no such law. There is now. No, oh, stop. Well, it got worse for him. That's pretty rough. Love that we're getting to spend some time with our uh, best friend. Were you raised by wolves? <laughs> yes, we were. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and now I present to you your workshop, Ser Da Vinci. We spared no expense in its design. You'll see, it is perfect, as if you never left Firenze. I wish you great success. And hope you enjoy Venezia as much as she enjoys having you. So, here we are. Exciting, isn't it? Care to come in? It may be later. I need to visit the Palazzo della Seta. Try and gain an audience with Emilio. As you wish. But should you find yourself with free time, or another Codex page, don't hesitate to visit. My door is always open. Grazie, my friend. Now, earlier in the series, I joked about how undressing Christina was a very stressful button press. This genuinely stressed me out because, my lord, an opportunity to hug our best friend. And if you miss it, oof. It hurts. Dinula. But I didn't miss it. Hell yeah. And we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching episode 9. And uh, leave a like if you like the video. And we will take it up from here next time.